what do clocks, bingo and a circus all have in common? Well, they all feature on today's Resource Review Primary Maths ICT special. The resources explore maths programmes for an interactive whiteboard, maths puzzles with a circus theme, and clock-related exercises. Recommending today's resources is Gareth Honeyfoot. Gareth is Senior Lecturer in Education and ICT Coordinator at the School of Education at the University of Northampton. On the panel today we have Colin Hinson, a freelance education consultant and broadcaster, and Helen Winter, known to everyone as H, a Year 5 teacher and a Science Coordinator at Edmund Waller Primary School in South East London. And over in the test lab, Matthew Tosh, our resident ICT investigator, will be trialling all the resources for us. Well, Gareth, it's great to have you on the show. Your you first much. resource for us today is a maths CD-ROM. Tell us about this one. Okay, from the ATM, Association of Teachers of Mathematics, features 16 programmes that all run within Excel. Okay, what's it called? Interactive Maths. Now, there are other maths CD-ROMs available, so what is it about this one that you think makes it stand out? I think the beauty of it is it's flexible and it's simple. So there's no flashy graphics or things getting in the way. It's just sort of very little between the maths and the teacher. So nice and simple. The one I want to show you is called Summon Product. It's ranged um, for varying levels of ability. You can imagine projected onto a whiteboard in front of your class. Two numbers chosen at random. You can adjust at the bottom um, sort of the range of numbers that you like. And we have here the sum and the product. And you can imagine a discussion with the class about you know, what does sum mean, what does product mean, and what answers are we going to get there. And what level is it aimed at? Um, it's very much up to the teacher. So I would say anything from year one all the way through year six and beyond. Well, thank you very much. Now let's go over to Matthew in the test lab and see what he thought of this resource. The interactive mathematics activities have all been programmed in Excel using macros, which means assuming you have Excel, there's no new software to install. It's simply a case of choosing the correct file from the CD. I'm going to choose this activity here, the fractions and decimals. And here's our startup screen. You've got a choice of either going to lesson ideas or straight into the activity itself. And the idea is that children can calculate between fractions and decimals. And to make it a bit more challenging, you can hide certain values by clicking on the hide button like that. Now you can also hide the numerator and the denominator of your fraction by clicking on these buttons here. But of course, if you hide everything, that would be getting a little bit over the top. And just to show you, we can go back to the lesson ideas. This can give you a little bit of a hint on what to do with the resource in a lesson. And you can even print out your lesson plan direct from the sheet. Well, let's have a look at another activity here. This one's a little bit more challenging. Again, you can hide the numbers, and there's a lot of scope for calculations here based on the sum, product, common factors, and multiples of numbers. But this time to hide the numbers, you actually click in the box, and they disappear. And once you've done this calculation, you can click on the next button at the bottom, and it generates a new set of numbers for you to work from within the parameters set at the bottom of the screen. Graphics also feature in this resource, and you can see it in this triangles feature here. So here's our picture. And this is based on lengths of the size of the, of the triangle. And children can have a go at guessing them. You can modify the sides. And your picture updates itself. And also, at the bottom, there's a description of the triangle. And we can change that until we have actually no triangle left. And one final point. If you install these files on your computer or on a network, then of course you don't need to bother looking for that all-elusive CD. Hermione. Well, Gareth, Matthew gave us a feel for other exercises on the CD-ROM. He didn't show us bingo, which is actually one of my favourites. It is great fun. <laughs> but what the exercises don't do is give any feedback to the pupils, whether they're right or wrong. Is that a failing of this resource? I don't think it's a failing. I think it's designed very much as putting the teacher in control, working with either the whole class or a small group, and therefore the teacher is expected to give the feedback. H, what do you think of this resource? It's very basic in terms of some of the things that are out there in its presentation. Um, and some children commented, oh, why is it boring? You know, things like mm. that. But it's, it's, it is basic, but it does what it says it's going to do. So this one, for example, which deals with area and perimeter, um, it gives the children the opportunity to actually see 
that it doesn't have to just be the outside of a shape, it can be all different things can mean area and perimeter. So they enjoyed the activities, they got something from it, but it's more that you would use it, I think, as an introduction or a plenary. Well, Colin, what do you think? <laughs> well, when I first looked at this, I must admit, I'm agreeing with H to a certain extent, uh, the first word that sprang to my mind was dull, <laughs> you know. Uh, but then the, the more I looked at it, the more I realised that actually the, the, so many of these programmes have these bells and whistles and mm. all sorts of things going on, and it detracts, you know. Yes. This way, it actually in, makes sure that the pupils are focusing on the task in hand rather than being distracted by other things that might be going on in the program. So for that reason, I feel it's a really useful teaching tool. OK, well, thanks very much. Now let's move on to Gareth's second choice of resource. Gareth, could you introduce this one to us and tell us a little bit about okay. it? Um, Math Circus, Act 4. Um, there's been Acts 1, 2 and 3 previously. Right. Um, it's just a personal favourite and seems to be loved by everyone who uses it. It's not a new product, though, is it? No, it's been around a while, but I think there's very little to beat it on the market, to be honest. And um, just to show you a couple of examples, if I may. Yeah, sure, go ahead. So we just go to the clowns. Right. Um, the monkeys have locked the clown in the cage. <laughs> so clues. Third number is one. The second number is one more than the third. And then three numbers add up to six. Right. So it's gradually think... the information builds up, right. and we uh, try and work out whether or not we can free the clowns. Thank you, Gareth. But before we go any further, Let's go over to Matthew in the test lab and see what he makes of Maths Circus Act 4. This little CD-ROM contains 12 circus-themed games based around maths. Now, it will keep track of your progress, so I've already entered my name. We'll hit enter and it will show you the menu of what's available. And you can see the games here, so I think we'll start with this cannon-firing one. Now, each of the activities starts with an introduction screen telling you the aims of the game. So we'll start the activity by clicking on the tick. And actually, all the controls on here are fairly intuitive. I just need to use the arrows here to move my, my target around. We'll click on the tick to fire the cannon. Well, obviously, I'm going to need a bit more practice on this one. The symbol up here, the ear, allows you to have the instructions read out. Now, this only works if you've got a compatible text-to-speech engine installed on your computer. We'll click on the little marquee here to take us back to the main menu because I want to show you the Pauli Elephant game. Again, we've got our introduction screen and if we go to the activity, it's actually fairly straightforward. Now at the top, you can see you can change the levels. There are five available on the basic setting and there are five on the advanced setting. So you've got a total of 10 levels for each activity. Now, at the bottom of the games menu, you can inspect your own progress to see how well you're doing. And I have a grand score of one. Well, we'll come out of that and we'll go to the teacher's options. And at the top, the Save Circuses button allows you to view all of the children's scores in the same format you've just seen for mine. And you can also change the general game settings. You can specify which games you want available at which level. You can turn music and sound effects on and off as well. Well, obviously, I've got a lot more work to do on this resource, so I'll hand you back to Hermione. Gareth, some of this resource, to me, looks a little bit dated. In this age of computer games, do you think that the children are really going to be switched on by it? It always amazes me just how much children are switched on by it, and adults alike. It, it does look basic, but as soon as they start playing, the problem-solving gets underway and trying to stop them is the problem, not trying to get them <laughs> Right. So an oldie but a goodie. Definitely. <laughs> well, H, what, what are your thoughts on this one? Um, the children absolutely loved the whole CD. I think it's excellent as well. Right. <laughs> um, there is a big drive at the moment in terms of um, encouraging children to do more problem solving and investigation in all curriculum areas, but especially maths. And this one that we've got here on the screen, the clowns, really helps them with that. It helps with sequencing, logic, memory, all sorts of things. It was really good. I was at school till seven o'clock trying to work out one of the advanced levels. Because really? <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is addictive. Once you've started, you don't want to give in until you've solved it. And it is very advanced, some of it. You know, it, it is really taxing. So they felt as if they were being challenged and they really had a good sense of achievement when they, when they managed to complete it. Well, Colin, are you a fan as these others are? <laughs> well, I, I'm not quite sure what else I can add. I thought it was a really lovely product. And one of the things was um, it wasn't just the maths, you know, that I loved 
some of the thinking skills and the, the logic puzzles that were there as well. And of course, you know, we're encouraging thinking skills now within schools. And I think this particular product is not just for maths, but for that as well. I think it's great. And you think there's enough there to engage pupils despite its look? Uh, yeah, I mean, the look is primitive, as you said before, you know, it, it has a dated feel to it. But uh, I mean, I played it with my daughter and, you know, I was trying to wrench her off the computer uh, <laughs> because she just loved it so much. And she's used to far more advanced graphics than this particular product. OK, well, now let's move on to Gareth's third choice of resource and see if it's as popular. This one's called Teaching Time. Gareth, tell us about this resource. It's an IT alternative to the big cardboard clock that we used to hold up for teaching maths with a brass fastener through the middle and the hands are dropped down to the bottom. <laughs> right. So we have the class clock. You can choose analog and digital clocks. And you can imagine on a whiteboard, so can anyone tell me what time it is? OK, what about in half an hour's time? So on and so forth. Right, okay. So, very simple as a whole class activity. If I quit out of that and go back to the games, which at least these have the, um, the benefit of giving feedback. So we can use them as a whole class. We could have children running up and banging on the whiteboard, or we could have individuals or small groups in the corner of the classroom or in the ICT suite. So the time counts up, and we've got to try and match the time oh, on the digital clock to the analog clock. And there were worksheets on it as well? There were indeed. I'm not the biggest fan of worksheets in general, but they are there and they're very usable. If you want them. OK, well, yeah. over to the panel then for a quick comment. Colin, what are your thoughts? I like the worksheets. Um, <laughs> it's always what, about nice to, what about teaching time? The teaching time was, was, was very, very good. I mean, I enjoyed the online resources, but what I, you know, what I was trying to say there, in a sense, was it's also nice to have stuff away from the computer as well. So it's nice to have that choice and that mix when it actually comes to teaching time. Mm. Now, H, what about you? Do you want your old cardboard clock back? No, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> um, on the interactive whiteboard, they have uh, clocks in there as well, but there's nothing that you can do with them. These are extremely good. The children really, really enjoy playing them. There is another game on here, however, um, and it's you can change the time and you have to stop the clock when it gets to the time. So it, in writing at the bottom, right. it has which time and the hands go round and you have to hit your mouse to stop it. And on the fastest speed, it's impossible. Um, <laughs> But even when it's slower, the children were saying, when they got it wrong, it says, not this time, or so close, or something. It gives you a, a bit of feedback. But the children were saying they would really prefer it if it could show you what it should have been, what you should have stopped it at, so that they could see what the time should look right. like. Well, thank you all very much. That's all we've got time for today. But just to recap, the three resources that we've looked at are... Interactive Maths from the Association of Teachers of Mathematics. Maths Circus Act 4 from Formation Educational Resources Limited and Teaching Time from Primary Games Limited. For more information about the resources we featured, go to our website. It's teachers.tv forward slash resource review or if you want to, email us resource review at teachers.tv. I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel, to Gareth, to H and to Colin. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye bye.